Okay, we'll call the uh, Thompson Planning District uh, meeting to order September 4th at 7 o'clock. We have an agenda before us. Are there any changes to the agenda? Thank you. We need a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Board Member uh, Smook and Board Member Byer, all in favor? It's carried. Uh, we have the adoption of minutes for Thompson Planning District meeting August 13, 2018. Resolution 2018013, moved by Board Member Ellis, seconded by Board Member Collada. Be resolved that the minutes of the Thompson Planning District held in Council Chambers City Hall, Thompson, Manitoba, on Monday, August 13, 2018, be adopted as circulated. Call for the question. All those in favor? Carry unanimously. Thank you. Now, resolution, um, resolution to approve the Crown Lands and Property Agency uh, General Permit Number 72610 uh, for a dog kennel. We have Crown Lands and Property Agency General Permit Number 72610 and a memo from the Director of Development Services. Resolution 2018014, moved by Board Member Byer, second by Board Member Collada. Whereas the Thompson Planning District has been advised of a Crown Lands General Permit Number 72610 for 0 0.50 acres. 100 by 200 feet of land locating on lot 3, PT Southwest 1 quarter 4 and PT Southeast 1 quarter 5-78-3 WPM in the LGD of Mystery Lake for a dog kennel site. And whereas the Development Review Committee has reviewed the application and has have no concerns now for, for be it resolved that the Thompson Planning District Board advise the Crown Lands and the Property Agency that the approval of the application shall be subject to the applicant obtaining the required permits for the planning district and confirmation with building and fence requirements as specified in LTD of Mystery Lake bylaw number 541. We'll go to uh, Anthony for support. And uh, the land is located south of the city, uh, the city of Thompson boundaries. It's along the Fire College Road and the intent of the proponent is to install fencing, a gate and a temporary storage shed in support of the existing dog kennel. The land parcel is currently designated LD, which is li limited development zone in the LGD of Mystery Lake zoning bylaw. Um, as kennels are permitted under the LD uh, zone, so no uh, rezoning will be required. Um, as mentioned, it was reviewed at development review on August 16th, and there are no concerns. Okay, we're going to go to the mover, board, board member Byer. Uh, yes, I'll support this as, as pointed out. This is um, actually uh, for many years been the if you will, a historical use of that area is for people to uh, keep their dogs there and having them properly fenced is protection from uh, other predatory animals and uh, I'm glad to see this move forward. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments? Seeing none, call for the question. All those in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Just before we adjourn, I want to uh, note the regrets from board members Dave Hassman, Brent Mack, uh, board member Kathy Valentino, Duncan Wong, and Dennis Foley. Uh, I look for a motion for adjournment. Board member Ellis, board member uh, Smook, all in favor? It's carried. We stand adjourned. We're now moving into the uh, regular council meeting of the council, uh, called to order at 7.05. If you haven't already, please change your name plates. Uh, as mentioned, we have regrets from Councillor Valentino and Councillor Wong and Councillor Foley. Uh, we have the, uh, just as we call this meeting to order and before we get to the approval of the agenda, I would first like to acknowledge uh, Rom from CBC uh, sitting in our in his first meeting from uh, for City Council. Welcome to, uh, to Thompson. Look forward to, uh, to your reporting. Uh, and secondly, I want to acknowledge uh, Anthony McGuinness's first day as city manager um, in the big chair. Pressure's on. <laughs> we'll now move to the approval of the agenda. Are there any changes to the to the agenda? Uh, yes. Removal of uh, deletion of item 7.4. Okay, if council could remove 7.4 resolution from the agenda. I need a motion to approve the uh, to approve the amended agenda, Councillor Byer. Councillor Ellis, all in favor? It's carried. Uh, motion to um, move the adoption of the amended agenda as presented. Um, uh, Councillor Byer, Councillor Ellis, all in favor? It's carried. Uh, we're now going into general inquiries. If anyone has a question, please come forward to state your name and ask your question at the delegation table. Welcome. Before I begin, 
I'd like to thank Mr. Mayor allow me to come here and ask questions and make some comments. Uh, give me a little bit of training. So I appreciate it and thank you. And what I'd like to ask today is regarding the to resolution 2018193. Uh, regarding to the Thompson Regional Community Center TRCC, uh, have two 100 gallon hot water tank which have been failed. That means being shut off. So I, I'd like to know. Uh, when these two water tanks shut off, how do you get hot water? The Recreation Director, Carol Taylor. We have a couple other hot water tanks that have been able to keep up to this point, but once hockey starts, uh, they won't be able to keep up. Okay, thank you. And first, we have budget of $10,000. Now, the costs go up to $15,000. What I understand here, the $15,000 is purchase and installation of the one 100 gallon tank. That means the cost go up so high. Can you explain, please? Carol. The original tender came back at four, just under $40,000 for two. We've been able to um, break it down and, and, and get it down to 15000 for one. Okay. I got a little bit information for you because I have taken out two 100 gallons water tank for T3, okay? It's in the warehouse right now. So maybe you can request to buy it, or maybe they can even donate to the TRCC. That's up to the city to go ahead for this. And... Okay, just wanted to address the, the cost of maintaining part of the cost, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that when these two water tanks were installed initially, uh, certain things regarding the piping, the foundation were up to code, but the code has changed. So part of that cost includes making those changes. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, I have a little bit of comments down here regarding to, today we are living in the very, I would say, modernization. Uh, most of the people forget about hot water tank. They're using inline on demand which you can save a lot of energy because when you need the hot water and the power come on and then you get hot water instantly. So I don't understand why we're not looking at another alternative instead of going for this uh, 100 gallon water tank because I work on 100 gallon water tank. They're so bulky, I need about three to four people to help me to move it to the location and it's part of the safety too. And do you think the city should look at this? Maybe it's a cost saving? Before me, but I think uh, basically we're replacing in kind. Uh, but certainly your suggestion in regards to inline on demand uh, could be researched further on other projects. Because the law, airport is using it, just for your information. Okay, thank you very much. You. Any other questions or comments? Second time? Oh, good. Please come forward, state your name, and ask your question. been informed that we had a wonderful winter games this winter. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to be there, but I've had reports that it was wonderful and congratulations to everyone involved. Um, and that note, has there been a report given as to the final tally of the expenses and the income from that event? And when will we get that? is being compiled uh, at this point and we should see it in September. Uh, Chairpersons uh, uh, Kissick and uh, Ross Hitch uh, said that they would come back to see us in September with the report and sit at the delegation table and walk through the report and the success of the games. So thanks for asking. Any other questions? Second time? Third and final? Okay, we're going to move on to committee reports, or sorry, adoption of minutes. Uh, October August 13, 2018, regular meeting of council, resolution 2018188, moved by Councillor Ellis, seconded by Deputy Mayor Colleen Smook. Be resolved that the minutes of the regular meeting of council held in Council Chamber City Hall, Thompson, Manitoba, on Monday, August 13, 2018, be adopted as circulated. Call for the question. All those in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. 
Now we're going to committee reports and we have the communications committee report and it's attached and who's making the report? Councillor Ellis. So I have the, uh, the communications committee report for March 21st till September 4th, 2018. Our committee members, uh, Councillor Councilor Blake Ellis, uh, myself as chair, uh, Mayor Dennis Fenske, Councillor Dennis Foley, City Manager Gary Sipatelli, Casper, our communications officer, um, Executive Assistant to Mayor and Council Angela English. And our organizational reps are Twyla Story from the Northern Regional Health Authority and T uh, Tara Ritchie from Valley Manitoba Operations. So our progress. Um, the, the trade show and health and leisure mart booths have been expanded on and now have a more st strategic role in the city's annual communication efforts. The 2018 trade show, uh, trade show booth highlighted Thompson's role as a regional hub as well as the city's efforts to stimulate economic growth to that end. Engaging in attendees was more proactive than previous years. Recreational signage is currently being installed through the, throughout the city and the main signage continues to be reviewed. The second phase of signage in, uh, improvements will include the waste disposal grounds, the water treatment plant, and the Collie cross-country ski trails. Improvements for website content have been put forward by Development Services and Rec Recreation Parks and Culture and will be implemented this fall. While the committee has not met throughout the summer, the Communications Department has taken an active role in the development of a business profile targeted towards new and, ex and existing entrepreneurs addressing both Thompson's economic strength and, and misconceptions about Thompson's current economic climate. The development of a broader communication pro profile will follow. And uh, Charlene Kissick stepped away from the committee at the beginning of the summer. So we'd, we'd just like to thank Charlene for her time on the committee. And that's my report. Thank you. Uh, Caroline's done. Okay, uh, questions on the report? Any questions? Seeing none, we'll receive for information. Thank you. We're now moving into correspondence. We have a letter from Jeff Wharton, Minister of Municipal Relations, in regards to the 2018 Municipal Road and Bridge Program. We have the letter and the 2018 Municipal Road and Bridge Program contribution. Attention, Mayor, uh, Mayors and Reeves, I am pleased to advise that your municipality has been approved to receive funding under the Municipal Road Improvement Program, component of the 2018 Municipal Road and Bridge Program. Department officials work closely with the Association of Manitoba Municipalities to establish the transitional 2018 Municipal Road and Bridge Program and to select success, successful strategic road rehabilitation projects. The successful project recipients and the corresponding provincial contribution are outlined in the attachment to this letter. Our government is pleased to support local municipal infrastructure projects such as your municipality's road project. Improvements in our transportation infrastructure ensure that our Pro, uh, province will see increased economic activity and public safety across Manitoba. The amount provided to your community for the approved road project will depend upon the actual costs incurred up to the maximum approved provincial contribution level. The deadline for completing projects and submitting all funding claims for 2018 Municipal Road and Bridge Program projects is March 1st, 2019. I look forward to expanding our partnership to ex address full scope of infrastructure needs in your community throughout the recently announced Canada Manitoba Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program bilateral agreement that will provide more than 1.17 billion in federal funding over the next decade for infrastructure projects throughout Manitoba. Sincerely, Honorable Jeff Wharton, uh, Minister of Municipal Relations. And the City of Thompson's allocation for street paving was $200,000. Go to administration for support, anything to add? The city of Thompson was eligible for up to 400,000. Um, we were led to believe that, that we'd be receiving 400,000 and obviously it was reduced to 200,000 for the year. Thank you. Uh, council, any questions or comments? If council will indulge, I would like to make a comment in regards to the announcement and following up on Mr. McGinnis's comments. We were advised by staff uh, earlier on in the spring in the midst of our budgetary process that uh, we would be allocated the 2017 amounts, which was $400,000. We were subsequently, uh, and we proceeded as council and staff uh, budgeting for that uh, dollar figure and budgeting for that level of scope of work. We received in August notification that uh, um, our funding would be $200,000, half of which was uh, verbally approved to us uh, in, in that manner, the budget for 2018 had been set on the premise of $400,000. Uh, so without going back into reserves or uh, asking for an increase in taxation, uh, we as council decided to reduce the scope of work uh, in 2018. And moving forward, we will have to uh, again 
uh, press upon. There is an emergency uh, resolution from the City of Thompson and the City of Selkirk at AMM, Association of Manitoba Municipalities, for their fall meeting to again lobby the, uh, uh, the province on two fronts. One, uh, to uh, not put the uh, municipal road and bridge program into the basket funding formula to keep that separate. And secondly, to make the announcements at a, time, uh, at a timely fashion. Uh, the construction season in Manitoba is very short. Basically, in northern Manitoba, you have about five months to get your job awarded, uh, mobilized, and construction completed and demobilized. So to get an announcement in, in August of a five-month cycle that our funding is cut in half is unacceptable, and we will support, as the City of Selkirk will support, that resolution moving forward in the fall to uh, lobby the province to reestablish the level of funding and also to keep it separate from the uh, uh, basket funding that's been proposed. With that, we'll move on to the next correspondence, a letter from Cliff Cullen, Minister of Justice and Attorney General, in response to our congratulatory letter. Uh, Mr. Cullen's letter reads, uh, Dear Mayor Fenske, thanks for your letter of August 2nd, congratulating me on my new role as Manitoba's Minister of Justice and Attorney General. I greatly enjoyed working with you during my time as Minister of Crown Services. I have always appreciated your strong advocacy for the City of Thompson, and I'm confident that we will continue to have a productive working relationship as I assume the responsibilities of Minister of Justice and Attorney General. Thank you again for your letter and words of encouragement. I look forward to working with you to make Thompson uh, its surrounding communities safer for Manitobans. Sincerely, Honorable Cliff Cullen, Minister of Justice and Attorney General. And I can advise Council that uh, we have uh, secured a meeting with the Deputy Minister of uh, Justice on Friday while I'm in Winnipeg attending the policing uh, contract uh, committee meeting uh, where we will discuss uh, the Main Street North program, uh, the 911 call center in regards to drop calls or being put on hold. And secondly, ha we will ask him to uh, discuss with his counterparts in housing uh, the, uh, the condition of 128 Hemlock, uh, which was recently uh, determined to be a crime scene in a fatality in our community. Any comments from Council? Seeing none, we'll go on to a public hearing from Manitoba Elected Divisions Boundaries Commission, September 11th, 2018. We have a poster for that public hearing, um, basically uh, stating that Tuesday, September 11th, 2018, uh, from 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, at the Best Western Ho Thompson Hotel and Suites on Mystery Lake Road across from uh, City Hall here, they will uh, hold this elect division, uh, Manitoba Electoral Divisions Boundaries Commission will hold this public hearing uh, to ensure that uh, people are well aware of, of the uh, reconstruction of boundaries or potential. Any questions or comments from admin? Council, any questions? Seeing none, we'll receive for information. Next, we have the Canadian Federation of Independent Business, the CFIB bus uh, news release. Uh, municipal overspending needs attention in fall elections. We have the news release from CFIB and we have the news release uh, from the City of Thompson. Basically, uh, we have uh, we have discussed uh, this in uh, a couple instances uh, since the announcement. We did do a press release uh, in that regard, um, and I would ask council if they have any comments before I make my comments. Any, any councillors have any comments? Uh, administration, any comments on the CFIB? Seeing none, uh, just my comments, uh, as, as mentioned previously, uh, we did uh, review this annual report. We did, uh, with staff's assistance, produce a press release um, countering some of the points that have been made by the uh, CFIB. It should be pointed out that the CFIB looks uh, back from 2018 to present, and they look on the expenditure side only. They don't consider the revenues uh, in regards to the, uh, the la increase in labor costs. Specifically on that uh, comment by the CFIB, that the uh, higher than normal uh, labor costs increased uh, by the City of Thompson. As we explained in the press release, the vast majority uh, of the increases on labor were due to the hiring of additional staff. If, uh, if residents will remember, since uh, 2008, we have uh, uh, taken on the waste disposal grounds the community safety officer program was expanded from four to eight officers. The Thompson Regional Community Center was opened, uh, and we've also uh, taken on the, uh, uh, the water treatment plant. So our uh, staffing numbers have increased, but there is also, in some cases, corresponding revenue uh, to offset some of the cost increase. That wasn't reflected in the report. And also in regards to uh, annual increases, just a reminder to the general public that on the capital side of projects, 
that uh, this council uh, has not uh, dipped into residential or commercial taxes, ta property taxes to pay for capital projects. They've been funded through reserves and grants from other agencies. Uh, so in that effect, uh, the, uh, the tax bill issued by the city of Thompson has not been affected by capital projects. The operating budget that has been ca passed by this council since 2015 uh, on the residential side, 1.5. On the commercial side, 1.5. The rate of inflation at that time was 1.12. In 2016, 1.5. On the residential side, 1.5. On the commercial side, the rate of inflation at that time was 1.42. 2017, 2.00 on uh, residential, 2.00 on commercial. The rate of inflation at that point was 1.61%. And in 2018, we passed 1.9% at uh, residential level and 1.9 at commercial level and the rate of inflation was 2.15%. So I would like to congratulate this council and administration for being prudent in the uh, uh, covering the, the costs that are uncontrolled uh, by other agencies. For instance, in the public safety sector, we are responsible for the RCMP contract, the largest contract in, in Manitoba for, for our city of 38 officers. Uh, we are not part of the negotiations, but we pay the, the uh, quarterly bill uh, as produced and their costs, uh, we have no control on, on those costs. Uh, other costs that, we would, that the average homeowner would see, whether it's hydro, uh, MTS or utilities, uh, we have to also look at those increases and that's included in the tax increase that was seen over the last four years. So again, uh, we uh, welcome the report to the CFIB. We uh, question the uh, the quality and the depth of the, uh, the uh, positions that they've taken, especially with the last comment in the report stating that they recommend that the province of Manitoba freeze all municipal spending until municipalities can get their spending under control. I will say publicly that our spending is well under control and that uh, we are working hard to make sure that this community is sustainable for many years to come and that uh, we look to uh, seek other revenue sources uh, rather than going to the, uh, the taxpayer and we will continue to do so uh, uh, moving forward. Thank you for that. We'll receive that for information. Uh, now we're moving into resolutions. And the first resolution sorry, uh, is resolution to approve Comstream Gigalinks Inc. right of way easement agreement. We have a memo from the Director of Development Services and Management Assets and Infrastructure and with two maps. The resolution reads resolution 2018189, moved by Councillor Byer, second by Councillor Ellis. Whereas on August 13, 2018, Council passed resolution number 2018176, approving the Comstream Gigalinks Inc. Comstream right of way easement agreement. And whereas it has been identified that the plan number and the land legally described in resolution number 2018176 was in error, and now for be it resolved, the Council approved the Comstream Gigalinks Inc. right of way easement agreement file number uh, 019 for the following area part plan 755 PLTO and division. With that, I will go to administration for support. Anything to add? Only to add that this is housekeeping. Uh, the incorrect legal land description was used, and this is just to rectify that situation. Thank you. We'll go to the mover, Councillor Byer. Nothing to add to the comments. Seeing none, call for the question. All those in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. We now have a resolution to approve sole source in the council orientation to way to go. Uh, Consulting Inc. and we have a memo from the Executive Assistance. Uh, resolution 2018190, moved by Deputy Mayor Colleen Smook, seconded by Councillor Byer. Whereas the City of Thompson has a council orientation and training policy to provide an orientation for all members of council after a general municipal election. And whereas in 2014 the City of Thompson retained Way to Go Consulting Inc. to provide the council orientation. Now therefore be it resolved the council approves sole sourcing the 2018 council orientation and training to Way to Go Consulting Inc. at a cost of $3,333.50 tax included. We'll go to administration for support. Anything to add? Only to add that this would be the second time the council would be uh hiring someone to do the orientation. The mover, Deputy Mayor Colin Smoke. Uh, yes, when we did this, after we were elected, it was very helpful for us to learn the ropes. And at that time, there was like 80% of us were new council members. And so it was uh, it really a, a, a good thing to have for us. Uh, an outside source in my first term um, 
the orientation was done by administration, second term by the consultant. And I think, um, in all fairness, I think more attention is paid when you have the outside consultant come in because then it's seen as truly a, uh, an independent body. Uh, so I'd, I'd like that idea. Experiences with a variety of municipalities and their issues, and they can bring lots of uh, examples to the fore when they're trying to explain certain things in the orientation. Any other questions? Seeing none, call for the question. All in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. We now have a resolution to approve the change in regular meetings of council schedule. Resolution 2018191, moved by Councillor Collada, second by Councillor Byer. Whereas, per the organizational procedure bylaw 1931-2015, as amended, Council may, by resolution, vary or cancel the date and time of regular meeting. And whereas Council wishes to remove the regular meeting of Council schedule for Monday, October 29, 2018, as the newly elected Council is not sworn in until the inaugural meeting of Council scheduled for Wednesday, November 7, 2018. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Council approve moving the October 29th, 2018 regular meeting of Council from, from the Council schedule. Administration, any support? Uh, go to the mover, Councillor Cloud. anything to add? Well, we already have two meetings in October, so I don't think this will have a big impact, but it certainly wouldn't be practical to have a, a meeting of Council without the Council being sworn in yet. So I, I think this is very necessary, and I certainly approve it. Council, any other questions? Seeing none, call for the question. All in favor? It's carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, we now have a resolution to approve allocating money from the Thompson Regional Recreation Center Trust account to the purchase of the water heater for, uh, for the Thompson Regional Community Center. And we have a memo from the Director of Recreation, Parks and Culture. Uh, resolution 2018193, moved by Deputy Mayor Colony Smook, second by Councillor Byer. Whereas the Thompson Regional Community Center, TRC, C, has two 100 gallon hot, uh, hot water tanks which have failed and whereas administration is requesting the council allocate 15,000 from the TRCC trust account for the purchase of the installation of one 100 gallon hot water tank and now, now therefore be resolved the council allocate 15,000 from the TRCC trust account for the purchase and installation of one 100 gallon hot water tank. We'll go to the uh, administration for support. Anything to add, Carol? Uh, no. Thank you. Uh, the mover, uh, Deputy Mayor Colony Smook, anything to add? up and running uh, before the season I would like us to take into combine some of the comments we had at the opening tonight when we're looking at it council any other questions seeing none call for the question all those in favor carried unanimously thank you we're now going into the mayor's report and this covers August 14th to September 4th attended and brought greetings for the Northern Association Community Councils at the 48th Annual General Assembly and Information Expo in Winnipeg uh, on August 15th. I received a thank you letter from uh, Mayor uh, Reg Mead from Woboden on behalf of uh, the council. Along with council members and administration, met with Al Alistair Ross, Director of Mining Operations for, uh, from Valet on August 21st. Attended the Thompson 2020 planning session on August 28th. The pre-election orientation for potential candidates was held on August 30th, and I understand we had about 20 uh, people attend, both for the trustee and the council. Um, and then the, the weekly transit ad hoc committee uh, meeting started on August 20th. Uh, also attended the annual Labor Day festivities hosted by President uh, Warren Lukey of uh, local USW 6911. I want to congratulate him and his volunteers and his executive for a, a great day. Uh, for uh, for recognizing uh, Labor Day, uh, various committee um, or Deputy Mayor Smook also attended the uh, the meeting or the uh, festivities as well. Various committee meetings were held: Development Review, Special In Camera Recreation and Community Services, and Legislative and Intergovernmental Affairs Committee. Uh, that's my activities for that time frame. I'll now go to Council to report on any city activities that they represented the city between August 14th and September 4th. Anybody, Deputy Mayor Smook. August 18th, I attended um, at the Bill Kamansky Wellness Center, uh, KTC and UCN. Uh, they had part of the, as part of the reconciliation, they're re returning uh, artwork back to some of the students from the schools prior. So they had a, a full two days there. It was uh, very interesting. I got to go off and on. And um, some of the people from the outlying communities that spoke, it's uh, very touching. If anybody ever has a chance to go listen to some of these stories about the schools, uh, please do residential schools. Else? 
Uh, just before we close, uh, I forgot to mention and want to congratulate. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No. Your thunder. The rail. Last week we had the rail announcement that there will be a train going to Churchill. They've actually started the mobilization work on it. So it is basically a good news story that they're hoping before winter sets in, uh, as long as we're up to the work keeps going and we get to Churchill this winter, I'll be more than happy. Uh, and with that, I'd like to thank uh, Deputy Mayor Smuck on her involvement in regards to One North and representing the City of Thompson. Uh, the, the point I wanted to add is that there was a recent election in uh, NCN, Nelson House. I want to congratulate uh, Marcel Moody at being re-elected as Chief of the Nelson House community, uh, also uh, adding uh, two new councillors. I want to th uh, welcome them to, uh, to the band council and also to thank uh, those band councillors that uh, weren't successful uh, for their service in the last uh, term of office. It's always great to uh, uh, continue to work with and continue working with Nelson House, our neighbours uh, and business partners in our community. So we look forward to uh, resuming those relations with uh, Chief Moody and his uh, uh, new council, which will be sworn in on uh, Thursday, and Deputy Mayor Smoke will be attending that in Nelson House. With that, I'd look for a motion to adjourn. Uh, Councillor Byer, Deputy Mayor Smoke, all in favour? Thank you. We stand adjourned. Have a good night. <laughs>